Something is amiss in our comprehension of the universe. Cosmology is, by all accounts, heading for a standoff on one of its most fundamental inquiries. How quick is the universe extending? For more than a decade, two sorts of estimation have been in conflict. Observations of the current universe normally find the rate of extension, called the Hubble constant, to be around 9% quicker than expectations based on early universe data. Specialists trusted that the James Webb, the most advanced telescope ever built, would assist with settling the inquiry once and for all. However, agreement has thus far neglected to appear. Rather, the preeminent observatory has established the error with incredibly exact new observations that threaten to overturn the standard model of cosmology. The new physics expected to change or even supplant the 40-year-old hypothesis is now a subject of debate, an astonishing and fascinating probability that there's something we do not understand about the universe. Join us as we dive deep into how new ultra-deep pictures from the James Webb have confirmed that there is something genuinely amiss with how we interpret the universe. Our universe began with a bang, the Big Bang. Energy, mass, and space streaked into reality all within a brief moment. Then, the youthful universe was formed, an extending roiling plasma stock of matter and antimatter particles that jumped into reality just to demolish each other upon contact. Left to their own devices, the matter and antimatter inside this plasma should have consumed each other altogether. Yet researchers believe that some unexplored world imbalance enabled more matter than antimatter to be produced, saving the universe from quick implosion. Gravity packed the plasma pockets, crushing and warming the matter so that sound waves traveling just over around 50% of the speed of light, called baryon acoustic oscillations, undulated across their surface. In the meantime, the high energy density of the early universe's packed content extended spacetime, pulling a little part of this matter securely from the fry. As the universe expanded like an inflatable, the standard story goes, ordinary matter, which interacts with light, coagulated around clusters of invisible dark matter to make the first galaxies, connected together by a vast cosmic web. At first, as the universe's substance spread out, its energy density and subsequently its expansion rate diminished. However, around five billion years ago, galaxies began to recede once more at an increasingly quicker rate. The reason was another imperceptible and strange element known as dark energy. The simplest and most popular explanation for dark energy is that it is a cosmological constant, an inflationary energy that is the same everywhere and at every moment, woven into the expanding fabric of spacetime. Einstein named it lambda in his theory of general relativity. As our universe grew, its overall matter density dropped while the dark energy density remained the same, slowly making the latter the greatest contributor to its overall expansion. Added together, the energy densities of ordinary matter, dark matter, dark energy, and energy from light set the upper speed limit of the universe's expansion. They are also key ingredients in the lambda cold dark matter, LCDM model of cosmology which maps the evolution of the universe and predicts its end with matter eventually spread that far experiencing a heat death called the Big Freeze. Many of the model's predictions have been shown to be extremely accurate. However, here's where the problems start. Despite extensive searching, cosmologists do not know what dark matter or dark energy are. As Ofer Lahav, a professor of astronomy at University College London who is involved in studies of dark energy, said, the vast majority agree that the universe's current composition is 5% ordinary nuclear matter, 25% cold dark matter, and 70% dark energy. The humiliating reality is we don't have any idea about the last two of them. However, a significantly greater threat to the LCDM model has emerged. Depending on what method astrophysicists use, the universe appears to be expanding at different rates, a discrepancy known as the Hubble tension. Methods that peer into the early universe show it expanding significantly quicker than LCDM predicts. Those techniques have been screened and confirmed by endless observations. Thus, as Nobel Prize-winning astrophysicist Adam Rees, who led the team that made the new James Webb measurement, said, The only reason that I can understand at this point for them to differ is that the model we have between them is maybe missing something. Measuring the universe's expansion takes a bit more than a radar gun. The primary method to quantify this development looks at the so-called cosmic microwave background, CMB, 
a remnant of the universe's first light produced just 380,000 years after the Big Bang. The imprint can be seen across the whole sky, and it was planned to find a Hubble constant with less than 1% uncertainty by the European Space Agency's Planck satellite between 2009 and 2013. In this astronomical baby picture, the universe is mostly uniform, but hotter and colder patches where matter is more or less dense reveal where baryon acoustic oscillations created it. As the universe detonated outward, this soap bubble structure swelled into the cosmic web, an organization of intertwining strands along whose convergences galaxies would be born. By concentrating on these waves with the Planck satellite, cosmologists derived the measures of normal matter and dark matter, and an estimate for the cosmological constant or dark energy, resulting in a standard model yielding a Hubble constant of about 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec. A megaparsec is 3.26 million light years. We should pause on this number briefly. If a galaxy is at a distance of one megaparsec away from us, that means it will withdraw from us and us from it at 67 kilometers per second. At 20 megaparsecs, this recession grows to 1,340 kilometers per second and continues to grow dramatically from that point forward. If a galaxy is any farther than 4,175 megaparsecs away, it will recede from us faster than the speed of light. A second technique to find this extension rate utilizes pulsating stars called Cepheids, dying stars with helium gas outer layers that expand and contract as they absorb and release the star's radiation, making them intermittently blink like distant signal lights. In 1912, astronomer Henrietta Swan Leavitt discovered that the brighter a Cepheid was, the slower it would blink, enabling cosmologists to gauge a star's absolute brightness and thus measure its distance. It was a milestone discovery that turned Cepheids into plentiful standard candles to measure the universe's vast scale. By hanging observations of pulsating Cepheids together, astronomers can build vast distance ladders, with each rung taking them a step back into the past. To construct a distance ladder, cosmologists build the first crosspiece by picking nearby Cepheids and cross-checking their distance based on pulsating light to that found by calculation. The following rungs are added using Cepheid readings alone. Then astrophysicists look at the distances of the stars and supernovae on each crosspiece and compare how much their light has been redshifted, stretched to longer, redder frequencies as the universe expands. This provides an accurate estimation of the Hubble constant. In 2019, this method was utilized by Rees and his colleagues, who trained the Hubble Space Telescope on one of the Milky Way's nearest neighbors. According to the standard model of cosmology, a vacuum has a really high energy density and horrible gravity, making it expand. The more of it there is, the greater the repulsion and the quicker it expands. In accordance with everything quantum, this vacuum was uneven at random locations. It decayed into normal vacuum. The enormous energy of the inflationary vacuum had to go somewhere, and it went into creating matter and heating it to blisteringly high temperatures, into making big bangs. Our universe is just one such big bang bubble in the steadily expanding inflationary vacuum. Surprisingly, this entire process might have begun with a piece of inflationary vacuum with a mass comparable to a sack of sugar. Fortunately, the laws of physics, specifically quantum physics, allow such matter to jump into existence from nothing. Of course, the next obvious question now is, where did the laws of physics come from? In 1981, German mathematician Emmy Noether shed light on this. She found that the fundamental conservation laws are simple results of deep symmetries of reality, things that remain the same even if our perspective changes. A striking property of such symmetries is that they are also symmetries of the void of a totally empty universe. So perhaps the transition from nothing to something was not such a big deal after all. Perhaps it was just a change from nothing to the organized nothing of our world-filled universe. Yet, why did the change happen? American physicist Victor Sanger highlighted the fact that as the temperature decreases, water transforms into organized water or ice. Since ice is more stable, might it be? He hypothesized that the universe went from nothing to organized nothing since organized nothing is more stable. 2. Why would that be? A massive black hole in the core of every galaxy. There are around 2 trillion galaxies in our universe, and as far as we know, Nearly each one contains a central supermassive black hole. They range in size from beasts weighing nearly 50 billion times the mass of the sun to the 4.3 million solar mass tiddler known as Sagittarius A asterisk, located in the center of our Milky Way. 
Yet how they got there is one of the great strange problems of cosmology. We know that a stellar black hole forms in a supernova explosion in which the core of a star collapses, yet no one knows how a supermassive black hole forms. For most of cosmic history, the centers of galaxies have been where a lot of matter resides and is consumed. Simulations indicate that black holes grow through mergers or gas accretion. More massive black holes devour smaller ones, a merging mechanism that should have been much more efficient than it is today. This leads to the question, are black holes like a tiny primordial seed, a leftover piece from the initial chaos that gave rise to the universe? This might help explain why they are present almost everywhere, even in galaxies where only a few stars are visible. Astronomers like astronomer Andrea Ghez and her colleagues have tried for decades to study and quantify the motion of stars orbiting Sagittarius A star. Their observations reveal that the stars are orbiting a common center of mass, which must be a black hole. However, no one knows if these black holes formed through direct collapse or were remnants of earlier stars. This leads us to a startling yet unsolved problem of cosmology. Is there dark matter that could reveal a significant part of this puzzle? There is no direct evidence of dark matter, but there are several hints pointing toward it. Cosmological measurements show it should exist. First, galaxies appear to rotate at high speeds. Without dark matter, they should not stay intact. Second, dark matter appears to provide the necessary gravitational force to hold galaxy clusters together. Some cosmologists believe that new physics is required to explain the observed phenomena. They propose that perhaps a variation of the laws of gravity can resolve these discrepancies. An exciting prospect. As research continues, the equations will guide scientists to refine or even replace the standard model of cosmology, a leap that can open new doors in understanding the universe's fundamental structure. As cosmologists inch closer to confirming new theories, the quest to understand the universe has never been more thrilling. Observations made by the James Webb Space Telescope can bridge gaps and reveal new phenomena, igniting hope for answers to questions that have puzzled humanity for centuries. Scientists' explorations are certain to enrich our understanding of the universe and, ultimately, our place in it.